Jim Alexander. Alexander. Yeah, okay. you can go with Alexander and Jim. Alex, Alexander. Yeah, it's like two first names, but it's my last name, but people call me both. What do you mean? So my name's Jim, and last name's Alexander. Oh, okay. So, no. but people, oh, people, people call me, it. it's so confusing, like, like Alexander, I'm like, cool, I'll go with it. <laughs> yeah, so, it's like a middle name for a last name. Uh, Janice, thanks for taking your time to talk to me. It's a sure. busy day, I'm sure, uh, with all the press going on. And well, thank you for having me. I'm yeah. very happy to be here. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the movie yet, because since I'm new in town, like, I didn't get the press, the right oh, press list to okay. get it. Uh, well, let me I, tell you all about it. I know. I've been <laughs> hearing about this movie based when I was in Chicago. I just moved from Chicago like less than two months ago. Nice. Uh, I've been hearing about this from my fellow film critics for from the beginning of the year. So this has been a big movie anticipated. What is it like for you? I mean, you're coming from Singapore uh, out here, and so far, what has it been like the experience of the madness kind of with um, the premiere and everything? I, it's, uh, I don't think it's something you could even have imagined. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been so crazy to be part of a movie that has so much buzz and so much hype and is in itself quite a milestone movie. It's not just any movie. So I think for us, on different levels, um, it, it, it's, it's kind of resonating um, at, at different levels. Mm -hmm. One is we come from Asia, so to have an all-Asian cast make this kind of impact in Hollywood is amazing for us. We, we do see ourselves on the big screen quite a lot, yeah. but we also consume a lot of Hollywood content, and, and this is so rare. So it's a privilege. I, I think many of us who are on the film from Singapore, from Malaysia, we do feel like it's a real honor to be, to be part of this. You know, it's interesting because back in April, I was at a conference and um, I was moderating a conference in New York. It was about the Asian and American film industry relations. And it was really interesting for me. It was like, um, there was all sorts of producers from, from Asia and from, from the U.S. And it was so interesting to hear the two different, um, almost, it's, it's interesting in the sense where the, uh, in China, they've overtaken us in a box office for the first time this year, and that's something that's never happened before. And right. the film culture is just exploding out there, and it's so big. I mean, not only do we take in American films, but the Chinese and, and Asian films too. Um, what is it like now? And, and the big question, I guess, the conference was everyone was trying to figure out, like, how do we get Asian films to the mainstream American audience to be accepted? And I feel like this could be the first film that really resonates with all sorts of Americans who are usually somewhat could be off put by oh subtitles or whatnot. This is a movie that can transcend not only that it's about the Asian culture but to all cultures. How well, do you feel about that? I mean, I think that um, if you're talking about world cinema and an American audience accepting that, it's not going to be overnight, mm -hmm, right? <laughs> right? So I mean, and that's the same in any country. Sure. Um, because Hollywood produces a lot of mainstream movies for all continents and territories and everybody understands the frame around a Hollywood movie. But the other way around, it's not that straightforward. So to consume, well, let's say, a Chinese movie or something that's in another language from Asia does require someone who is kind of open-minded open, yeah. no, open minded, and it's a habit and it's just an, an ability to, to be so adventurous, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and not everyone's still a minority of an audience, right? But it's very interesting to see something like a, a film like Crazy Rich Asians um, come out of Hollywood because it keeps to a certain formula that people understand. Yeah. But the only, the major difference is there are Asian faces on screen, not just one token Asian face, but the whole cast. It is a romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. It's funny, it's got a heart. People understand it's it's universal in many ways, and that makes it easier for a Western audience and American audience to accept that. And baby steps, right? Oh yeah, you know, it doesn't happen um, overnight. But I think this is a good introduction potentially to expose, like, hey, you know, maybe we should check out more of these films or, or just absolutely. See, you know, I I think that I think as people in the media, in arts and entertainment, producers have a responsibility to taste making. Mm -hmm. And you can't expect an American audience who's used to a certain diet of films to suddenly be, you know, go to every indie film that's showing right. in their town or, 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 ex or just consume world cinema. But it is a way of opening up that window and you just want to get a wedge in. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, hey, the rest of the world is doing this. And I think Asian content 
it's gonna go big and and more. There's a market Especially all with over more. Streaming and online movies and television and Netflix and Amazon, it can only just explode because there's so much content in Asia and great talent. Mm -hmm. It's just that on this side of the world, we're just not used to seeing that. Yeah, no, it's so true. Hopefully this film kind of at least opens that wedge like you mentioned. Uh, this is based on a book. You know, the funny thing is about it, I was, my sister was calling me, he's like, oh, what interview I'm doing? I'm like, well, I'm doing a creative. She's like, oh my God, I love that book. I read it. Oh, great. Um, so this is, a lot of the audience for this film are going to be people who read the book beforehand and are kind of familiar with that. So there's a built-in audience in a sense. Uh, what was your familiarity with the book uh, beforehand, before doing the film? Did you read it, or was that something once you got the role you started reading? <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah, was that I, whole aspect I, of it? I didn't read it until I had to audition. Okay. And um, I only got the audition notice maybe like two days before, and I was like, oh my god! It's a quick read. <laughs> and it's like not a slim novel, right? So right. Like, but it was fun, and it was easy to get through it. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I enjoy, and I'm in the middle of number three right now so I'm on the third book and I think I've met many people who are big fans of, of the trilogy it's really also you know funny to see Singapore sort of like in the novel and, and people knowing Singapore through the novel and you're from there originally so how was that for you to experience you having a familiarity with Singapore and then the story uh, did you guys shoot there too on we location did. a lot? How was yeah. that for you? I mean, you kind of were like almost a host in a sense. Yeah, so. and we played host to the cast. Yeah, um, a lot, uh, which was fun. I mean, I feel that the, in many ways, the novel is also a satire, right? Mm -hmm. It's about a very crazy rich family, and their particularities and the quirks and eccentricities of this one top one percent. Yeah. So it does not reflect Singapore as we really are but it's a little bit voyeuristic into this, this world. Mm -hmm. And that's what the movie tries to capture. Um, because, I mean, why, why we find it fun, I think it's because um, it's, it's slightly bizarre, it's, it's so beautiful, it's so lavish and, and um, overindulgent almost, but that's part of the fun. Yeah, and you get to see all the sights of Singapore for yeah. those that haven't been or no, like you get to see the really. Well, I wish I wish you saw it. I was really proud. I'm gonna see it on my own for sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, and and just last night at the screening, watching the movie in front of you know together with an audience of mm -hmm. about eight nine hundred people, I was so moved to just see the cityscape of Singapore because we look so beautiful mm -hmm. on screen. And people are gonna get exposed to it. Those who have never seen or. You know, yeah. maybe you'll bring some tourism. No, I, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I hope so. I, yeah. I, I, mean, I really want it to happen. I think it will. So tell me about your character in the film. Um, who do you play for those that haven't seen the movie or so those who I, know the book? I play Felicity Young, mm -hmm. and she is one of the bitchy rich aunties in the movie. Um, Eleanor Young, played by Michelle Yeoh, is my sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. And we are the aunties whom uh, the main female lead, Rachel Chu, uh, played by Constance Wu, she has to win us over right. in order to get her foot into this family. So, you know, it's a it's a meet the parents kind of movie, but it's meet the aunties. Meet the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> the family tree. <laughs> yeah. So we are, well, you know, we are opinionated, we are judgy, um, but we're not mean. We're not mean girls. We, we just protect what we have, who we are, and just very careful about who comes in. I think that's a I mean, lot about in certain cultures too. I can relate that. Yeah. I come, uh, my family's Polish, so I come from Poland. I know this whole overprotective thing. Like, who are you dating? Even that, yeah. uh, like, my family's super close. They always check in on me. <laughs> I could be out like, where are you at tonight? Like, really? I'm 32. You know? <laughs> right. Like that sort of thing. And but, I think it's even more. Um, it's quite Chinese that mm -hmm. it happens to. Um, I mean, Henry Golding plays Nick Young, who is the son, and sons are such prized possessions in Chinese culture because they carry on the lineage so the person you marry is extremely important and what they bring to the table mm -hmm. you know and for them being so, expectation, yes, right? for them being so crazy rich and we know in the very top strata of the wealthy in society the rich marry the ultra rich you don't go down you go up so that's the that's the universe that yeah. I come from but I wouldn't pay for taxi if I have to walk four blocks in the rain, you know, it's just too expensive. <laughs> She's that kind of lady, Felicity Young. 
And um, so what is it like for you to play a character like that? That must be a little bit, is, is there similarities, any sorts of things you drew upon from your own life, or is it just completely kind of imagine having fun and just being something that you're opposite of? Well, um, I don't understand this life, but I yeah. think we already exude the vibe the minute we wear the couture dresses. Mm -hmm. Because you don't do that in ordinary life, and they wear that everywhere, you know. Um, and from wardrobe, we were getting these racks and racks of really beautiful gowns and dresses. And once you put it on, it's like, yeah, I'm crazy rich. I feel it, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't have that many scenes in the movie that really give me a chance to expand on the character. So it's more of um, the look. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes you yeah. feel when you put on that whole thing. You kind of exude that. that yeah, and, and actually the. Yeah. The environment, the set, the surroundings in which we were shooting was so beautiful and so lavish. You do, it's subliminal almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. You kind of enhance it. <laughs> so this is a pretty much a, a romantic movie in, in the core of it. It's about romance, about dating, it's kind of about finding the one. I'm big on romance. I'm, I'm a huge fan of romance. Romantic movies are my favorite topic. I just wanted to, to know what are some of your potentially favorite romantic movies or how do you, how do you like that genre? Um, in your own personal life? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I love watching it. It's always, you know, fun and light. I do watch a lot of dramatic films. Um, and then once in a while, make sure that you balance that diet of film watching with something, you know, that's a bit more, uh, you don't have to think so hard. You yeah. know? But I think this is more than a rom-com, though. Mm -hmm. I think when you watch it, you realize that it ends on it gives a certain perspective on uh, the way Asians look at the world and, and how we look at family and mm -hmm. how we look at love. And I think the movie has a real heart because you find that you know love, while it requires sacrifice, love conquers all. Mm -hmm. And everyone understands that. So it, 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 it lands on a, on a nice, you know, um, heartfelt note. And it's not just about ha ha ha, you know, we've got Ken Jeong and Aquafina. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and I mean, that really gives a nice spice and energy to it, but it's, I think it's, it's full of heart, really. You know, it's interesting for me, Sid, you come from a different culture. Uh, obviously now you're kind of experiencing the, the American side of it too. Uh, what are some things you like to do in your personal life? For fun, kind of away from the industry, uh, away from acting, what are some things that you find as hobbies or passions? Oh, I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes up quite a lot of my time. <laughs> so uh, I have two boys. Uh, they're 12 and 14. Oh, well, that's that age where... <laughs> yeah. So I've got teenagers in the house. Uh -huh. And I'm a big yoga practitioner. So that keeps me nice and on an even keel and, and keeps me sane. Mm -hmm. um, That's important, uh, yeah. you know, in the industry sometimes, you know, to get away and have that escape. And I would say that a lot of my life revolves around the arts. Mm -hmm. So I'm a theater actress back home a lot of the time. I do a lot of theater. I also sit on a lot of nonprofit arts boards. Mm -hmm. So in education, uh, on a school board, um, in, a, in, a, in a big arts, a major arts company, a theater company, fundraising. So I, that's kind of my life, you know. This is something you're passionate about, the, the fundraising, kind of getting the arts out there and, and yeah, you know, I mean, supporting it. Uh, I, I advocate for the arts. I also advocate for the LGBTQ cause back home. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are important to me. For fun, I do yoga, I, I, I read, I watch a lot of television. And kind of the normal things. Yeah, like everybody else, like yeah. nothing new there. But these causes, I feel, are the things that we, I want to do to give back mm -hmm. and make a change. Tell me about the LGBT. How, how did that become a cause for you? What, what prompted that in a sense that made you want to do it back home? That's very interesting in a sense that... Well, I think unlike the US, um, the way, the perspective on acceptance for the LGBTQ community is not so enlightened. Mm -hmm. I think there's still quite a lot of um, reservation about that. I think partly that's part that had partly to do with that is the fact that we are a multi-racial, multi-religious community. It's not so easy to win everyone over because there are there's multiple dimensions to the issue. Mm -hmm. And so for us in Singapore, the government is treading quite lightly uh, and slowly on, on, on this issue. And for me, I just feel, well, I, I believe in 
in, in accepting everyone. I think love is what matters most of all. I think everyone Absolutely. should love who they want to love. And I have so many gay friends um, who, who are part of, I, I call them my family. So I just want to be on their side and, and actually be on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. So I say speak up now or forever hold your peace. So I'm speaking up. And it's good, and you know, and this, there's a movement, and you're kind of transcending it to your own culture, and you know, when not everywhere we kind of see things around here, and there's a lot of talk about it, but we forget that when we go to other countries or, or other continents, it's not always like that. There's no. still and a lot you know, of change that needs to be made. Sometimes there is pushback, mm -hmm. and you have to manage that. I mean, in Singapore, um, uh, gay sex is still a crime, hmm. and that's a big deal. We want to get it off the books. We want to. We want to undo that. Yeah. But. Um, there's a lot riding on it, and, and, and it's 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 a very hot topic. So you have to just it's a hot potato, and you just want to be careful. Um, you don't want to start too much conflict in a society that's so multiracial and so multi-religious. We can see that in the state sometimes the impact of pushing too far. Um, so that's that's who we are. It's pretty how brave of you yeah, to do that. I mean, that's very noble yeah. and. Very, very much, you know, standing up for what you believe in, which is always great to, to kind of act upon it. Because a lot of people think about things, but they don't act, you know, and there's those people that talk about it and do it. Yeah, you know? and there's a difference. right. So we have this wonderful event called Pink Dot mm -hmm. in Singapore. Singapore is known as the little red dot. So once a year, we form a pink dot, and it's at a park, like a speaker's corner. And anyone who wants to support the LGBTQ cause, just turn out on that day in pink. It's almost like half a day of concerts and music and, and celebration of love and, um, and support for the LGBTQ community. And it's been growing over the years. And it's, it's a 10th year this year. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, so can you tell us now uh, what can people expect to see this movie? Um, and, and maybe if there's, have you noticed even the difference from the book to the movie for those that are coming out to see this? What can they uh, I mean, expect? Yeah, I think, well, you know, the book uh, really talks about so many different characters. There are so many different plot lines going on. It's, it, could, it would be a perfect TV series. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it could go on because it does go on about this family and, and it's, it's extended family. But the movie can't do that. It focuses a lot more on the love story and what love needs or what love means in order to transcend the boundaries of you know, tradition and family expectations, which I think a lot of Asian people identify with. Um, I think they can come in and expect to have a lot of laughs. There's, there's, there are so many comedians, wonderful comedians on this show. Um, but also to be really moved because I think it's very poignant when love conquers all. But I'm not going to give away any spoilers for not. you. Uh, anything on set that happened behind the scenes that you, that kind of stands out to you? Uh, a memory that maybe no one saw kind of behind the scenes that maybe an interaction or something that kind of sticks with you that was maybe fun or or that that you kept to yourself. Um. Hmm. Good question. I mean, what I. What I remember most is our time in um, Malaysia and Singapore in the karaoke suites. Oh. We spent a lot of time Did you guys at the KTV karaoke? when we were not shooting. And That's a behind the scenes <laughs> kind of bonus clip. Yeah, really. so, I mean, so, so when, um, because we were the hosts in a way that we were shooting in our mm -hmm. hood, right. we took them out a lot to eat, but all the cast wanted to do was eat dim sum and karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also the way we bonded, yeah. um, so because it was so fun. Uh, I think the, the camaraderie amongst the cast was very special, and this movie really brought everyone together from different countries. Everyone's Asian, but we're from Australia, from the UK, from America, you know, from Singapore, from Malaysia, mm -hmm. and and that that was um, very that was amazing. We also I remember also a couple of the cast members telling me, oh, I've not been to Asia. I know my parents come from Hong Kong or the Philippines, and I just want to visit that. And they, they went there for the first time. Wow, what an I experience. Mean, so they've not been back, or they've not even been there in their lives, and now they're going back to look for family or, or where they were born, or, you know, that, that's pretty special, I think. 
Um, and final question, any, any shows that you're watching either on Netflix or, or, or films that you've seen that you kind of recommend or, or that you I'm really kind of recently a, enjoyed? I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit behind. I'm still catching up on The Crown. Okay, that's a good so one. So that's what I'm watching right now. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. Appreciate your time. Oh, and thank you. Definitely. Thanks, thank thanks you so much. Me. Oh, absolutely. I hope you enjoyed the movie. Check out the movie. I'm going to see it myself. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm definitely going to enjoy it. Thank you so much. Thank you.